today i'm going to show you some models related to the development of heart uh, as you all know from the cardiogenic area two endothelial heart tubes develop and then they fuse with each other and form four bulgings from cranial to caudal the cranial one is the arterial end and the caudal one is the venous end from cranial to caudal there is bulbous cordis primitive ventricle primitive atrium and the sinus venosus along with its two horns so this is the fused endothelial heart tube and you can see the arterial end and the looping has not yet taken place when the cardiac looping takes place this is the cut surface where you can see that the arterial end and the primitive ventricles have been cut from the top so that you can see the cavity inside another model is after the bending has taken place see this one is the one where you can appreciate the bending that is going to form the cardiac loop it starts by day 23 and ends by day 28 so this is the arterial end and then the cephalic end bends ventrally and to the right whereas the caudal end bends dorsocranially and to the left so that is how the bending is responsible for the formation of cardiac loop that completes by day 28 so this is the arterial end then there is bulbous cordis and a loop is there that is known as bulbo ventricular loop or you can say in some books it is written as bulbo ventricular flange so this is bulbo ventricular loop then the primitive atrium and at the back there is sinus venosus so this is another model to show you how the bending is taking place arterial end bulbous cordis bulbo ventricular loop primitive ventricle atria and then the sinus venosus this is again the model showing you the bending but side has been cut to show you the interior of the primitive ventricle and the primitive atrium this is primitive ventricular cavity and the primitive atrial cavity so this is the arterial end bulbo ventricular loop primitive ventricle these are the atria and finally at the back there is sinus venosus right similar model is over here also which you can see the arterial end shown in red primitive ventricle atria and the sinus venosus at the back the same one is showing you the sinus venosus now a question arises why the right horn of sinus venosus is broader than the left horn it is because the left horn majority of the left horn degenerates only the po po portion that remains is responsible for the formation of coronary sinus and oblique vein of left atrium whereas the right horn gets absorbed completely into the right atrium thereby forming the smooth portion of right atrium so this is about the looping of the heart and the arterial and the venous ends how they align themselves to form the adult structure that we see as the heart thank you